What? What, what, what? What the hell is this? Harumph, 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 harumph. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. Give the governor harumph. Harumph. You watch your ass. I see you shiver with anticipation. Let the show begin. Hey, hey, everybody, this is David Heretic coming at you with another edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. And tonight. Tonight! All right, we're going back to Bruce Springsteen. Yes, indeed. Bruce Springsteen fans, feeling you. Come on now. Here we go. Before we go any further, for those of you who are feeling inclined to doing all of the clicks and the likes and the bibbity bibbity bop, do me a favor. Before you do all that stuff, please watch the whole video first, okay? Give me a chance to actually earn those clicks and likes. Now, after the video's done, if you still feel like doing all those clicks and likes, then by all means, feel free to click away. This comes as a request from JFK, and this is actually one of JFK's three prioritized requests from the month of November for being a gold tier member on the Patreon page, so, here you go, JFK. Hope you enjoy the show, man. JFK wanted to see me react to this. It is Bruce Springsteen with a tune called Roll of the Dice. Now, have I heard this song before? No, I have not. To the best of my knowledge, this does not resonate with me in any way, shape, or form. However, there's always a possibility I may have heard the song in passing and I just don't realize it. So as always, if I start listening to the song and I suddenly go, wait a second. Hold everything, I've heard this before. I'll let you know. That's the truth. You know me, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Okay, before I get to this reaction, I have to, I have to clarify something. Um, And JFK warned me that this could happen. I know I'm gonna, I, I'm not gonna get any flack for this, I hope, and I really hope people don't give JFK any flack for this either. JFK originally gave me a link uh, with Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band performing this song. Unfortunately, right as I was about to start filming, I was going. I went to download the video and I couldn't download it. The uploader decided to make the link private. So we can't watch it and I can't download it. I messaged JFK and he said, the only other video that's decent enough is this video. And I don't wanna, I, he, he was hesitant, man. Um, this apparently is not the E Street Band playing with Bruce Springsteen. This is what is known in Bruce Spring, according to JFK, this is what is known in Bruce Springsteen circles as that other band. Uh, apparently there was a point where Bruce Springsteen, he didn't fire the E Street Band, he, he dissolved it, he, he eliminated it, and he got this other band, and man, apparently the flack that he got for using this other band was so great that he decided to fire all those people and uh, bring back the E Street Band. Hooray for that. Uh, but this is the only video that JFK thought was of good enough quality for the reaction. So JFK wanted to apologize in advance for this video. It's not his first choice. His first choice was unfortunately the video that got made private. So folks, I, and this is just me speaking on JFK's behalf. Please take it easy on JFK. He's doing the best he can with what he's got. We had an original plan. He gave me a link. It, it verified when I when he gave when he made the request. He verified it when I, I verified the download, and it worked just fine. And then I went to download it to do the reaction, and I couldn't do it. So we came up with Plan B, and unfortunately, this is the only Plan B that we could come up with. So, on behalf of JFK, I'm apologizing. Okay. Uh, just please take it easy on him. It's not his fault. If you want to blame anybody, blame the original uploader. If you want his information, I'll give it to you. I, I, I still have it. I'll, I'll give it to you. And you can all message him and go, what the hell are you doing making that video private? You know, I mean, it's his channel. It's his video. You can do it as he wants. But man, boy, that threw a monkey wrench in, didn't it? Anyway, we're going to use the version here that was posted on Bruce Springsteen's face. So this was posted by Bruce Springsteen. And the video has 323,000 views. It'll get you there. Other than that, there's really nothing else left to say. Link to the original video will be down below in the video description for your viewing pleasure at your leisure. Let 
get started. What do you say? Are you ready? Are you ready? Because here we go. All right, here we go. Bruce Springsteen, roll the dice from Ink Concert and TV plugged? Not unplugged, plugged. Interesting. I've never heard of MTV plugged. That's different. Anyway, well, let's see how wait and see how this goes, I guess. Because if we're dealing with MTV, we could be having problems. Viacom is notorious for protecting their intellectual property. So we'll see what happens. All right, let's do this. All right, boy, let's do this. From what JFK told me, I I don't know because I I've I've never followed Bruce Springsteen's career. I've never really you know I I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I've been a big fan of his for decades. No, I haven't. I've until I started the channel, I didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to him. Honestly, I mean I had a lot of respect for him as a musician, as a songwriter, and what he has contributed to the world of music. I absolutely have a lot of respect for him, without a doubt. 
But I'm not going to sit here and pretend like I followed his career because I haven't. Um, so I'm really kind of taking all this on hearsay from what JFK told me. JFK told me that, as this band is known as that other band or the other band, take your pick, uh, Bruce was met with a lot of backlash. Now, I'm going to say some things here that could be deemed controversial. And I'm highly critical. But quite frankly, uh, I don't care, and I'm going to say them anyway because it's my opinion. It's not the E Street Band. I get it. It's not the E Street Band. It's, it's a completely different band. And if I'm being honest, it, it, a completely different sound, a completely different approach. Yes. Yes. Very noticeably different approach. A very noticeably different overall ensemble sound. Okay? You're missing the horns. You're missing the multiple guitars. Um, you're missing a lot of elements, but you also have a lot of other elements that are a lot stronger in this band, in that band, than there is in the E Street Band. Like, for example, backing vocals. The E Street Band has backing vocalists. They, they, there are, they are there, absolutely, but they're a lot more subtle. In this band, boy, are they up in the mix. Wow. Um, they are very forward in the mix. They are very prominent as far as placement within the song um now having said that is that a bad thing for this song from what i've heard of it so far i don't think so i think it sounds fine i i don't have any issue with anything i'm hearing everything i'm hearing within the context of this song makes sense Everything I'm hearing within the context of the song sounds good. I will say the balance of the backing vocals, it's, it's, it's big, man. It, they, are, they are big in the mix. But I think that, number one, uh, do I think that's an accident? No, I don't think that's an accident. That's absolutely being done on purpose. And I believe there's a reason for it, for this particular song. Now, maybe in other songs where the backing vocals don't need to be so prominent, Maybe they're brought down the mix a little bit, but in this song, not only are they being loud and noticeably loud, but I think it's, un I know it's intentionally done and there's a good reason for it. It sounds good. It does. Bass player sounds really good. I like what he's doing. Drumming sounds really good. I like what she's doing. Uh, the guitar playing sounds good. I like what he's doing. Piano playing, very well done. I really don't have any issue with this. I, I don't I don't understand why people give this but from what I've been told that th this band gets a lot of a lot of heat and I don't I don't get it. I don't see why. Other than the fact that they're not the E Street band. You know, it's funny how bands can be sometimes when it comes to bands. Uh, I'm going to use baby metal as an example. I'm going to use baby metal as an example. Uh, baby metal has the Eastern Commie Band and they have the Western Commie Band, right? So when they tour in the East, they tour in Japan, they tour in Europe, they have the Eastern Commie Band. When they come over here to, you know, to America, when they come over here in, in, in to North America, South America, Canada, you know, they, they come to the U.S., Canada, Mexico go down to South America, whatever, they bring the Western commie band. Is there a difference? Yeah, there's a difference. Are the songs still being played? Yes. Are the songs still being played the same way? Yes. Do the songs sound exactly the same? Not exactly, but they both work. They both work. And remember, and I'm, I'm, I, I was informed of this when it came to the Though I always knew the Western commie band were hired guns. I always knew that one. I was under the impression the Eastern commie band was more uh, solidified as being a part of baby metal. No, they're not. As it has been pointed out to be by a lot of people in the comments, the Eastern commie band are hired guns too. So are they part of baby metal? No, they're hired guns. Plain and simple. And the same thing can be said here. 
hired guns. They're hired guns. Same thing with the E Street Band. They're hired guns. Um, Bruce is the main event. Everybody else supports Bruce. Should it matter what band plays with him? No, it really shouldn't because people are paying their money to see Bruce Springsteen. They're not paying their money to see the E Street Band, right? What what the name on the marquee is what? Bruce Springsteen. That's the main that's the main event. So fans can be funny. Fans can be funny. Fans can have their loyalty. And look, fans are they're absolutely welcome and they absolutely have the right to place their loyalty wherever they want. But sometimes those fans' loyalties are misplaced. They're put in the wrong place within the context of the overall product. And when you're looking at the overall product, what's the center around? It's centered around Bruce. Does it matter who backs him up? It shouldn't. It really shouldn't. Like I said, I don't have a problem with this band. None. None. I'm also not a diehard fan of Bruce Springsteen. And I know a lot of people are. And a lot of people are big fans and diehard fans of Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. I mean, and like I said, you're more than welcome to place your loyalty wherever you want, but keep things in perspective. Don't sit here and say, well, this band's terrible. This band's awful. That, that other band has no business playing with Bruce Springsteen. That other band can't hold a candle to the E Street Band because, folks, I'm sorry. I respectfully disagree. There's nothing that this band is doing wrong. Nothing. It's solid. It's super solid. I got no issue with it. So, anyway, that's just my two cents. Let's keep going. Empty 
like you weren't, weren't sure who you were anymore. Have you ever been so wrong? Have you ever been so cried and broken hard? Have you ever been so wrong? You break this sound court, you break this song down quarterly. It's very simple to follow. It's you got the I believe we're in C. Uh C, F, G, and A. You're playing around, seriously, with the one, the four, the five, and the major six. That's really all you're utilizing. Now, within those four notes, you're going in different directions. Sometimes you go from the root to the four, to the six, to the five. Sometimes you go from the root to the six, to the four, to the five. You usually, usually start on the root, and you end on the five. Now, what happens in between there? Sometimes it's six, four, five. Sometimes it's four, six, five. But every time it's always, it sounds good though. And it's simple, yes, easy to follow, absolutely. And like I've always said on this channel, simple can be effective when it's done properly. This is absolutely being done properly. Um, I got no problem with the songwriting. Songwriting sounds good. It, 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 one of the reasons why it's working is for its simplicity is because it feels like he's opening this song up. Now, I don't know how long the studio recording is. The studio recording could be four minutes long for all I know. All I know is we have like, what, an 11 minute long performance here. Um, and it feels to me like he's opening it up. When you have a simple song like this, you can do that very easily, especially within a live format on the fly, where you can literally call it off. And there's not there's not a whole lot of variation, you know? There really isn't. So it's easy to follow, easy to go along with, and you can read and watch for the signals. Listen for the signals. Listen and watch for the cues, which he's given them several times. We're gonna bring it on down. We're gonna bring it down a little bit more, you know? And when you say things like that, that's your cue to, okay, we're opening it up now. So we're gonna bring it down, we're gonna open it up. Now we gotta keep our eyes and ears open for when we're gonna bring it back into the groove again. That's okay, that's all right. I'm sure these guys, look, Bruce Springsteen is not gonna hire, you know, a bunch of no talents. He's gonna hire, you know, top-notch musicians who are able to follow and watch for cues who are going to be able to follow and listen for audio cues, who are able to anticipate and feel where things are going without jumping the gun too soon. You know, he's going to hire good people. So I'm sure they're all watching them. They're all ready to see when we're going to come back into the main song again. Um, and, and like I said, as far as the band goes, I got no issue with them. None. I... I to some extent, I kind of like what they're doing more than the E Street Band when it comes to certain aspects for this song in particular. Uh, I've mentioned their bass player in the E Street Band. Uh, I believe his name is Gary. Um, I've mentioned him several times. Rock solid bassist. Rock solid bass player. I don't think I've ever heard Gal Gary do popping and slapping before. I don't think I've ever heard it. Over here... On the other hand, this bass player is popping and slapping quite a bit. And because of this song and the style of this song and the direction of the song, it calls for it. Now, let's say, let's say it was Gary, not popping and slapping, just fingering. Would it sound good? Yeah, absolutely. It would sound good. Would it sound as good as what the bass player is doing on this particular song? I don't think so. I think this was very, I think what the bass player is playing in this song, what he's doing, how he's doing it, I think it's very appropriate and it sounds better than just fingering. So that's just one example. I, I, you could use that example across the board um, for this particular song. It fits, it works. Um, so there's that. I, I don't know the circumstances behind what caused Bruce Springsteen to dissolve 
and uh, get, I don't want to say eliminate, but uh, what caused them to basically disintegrate the E Street Band and, and pick up this band. I don't know what were the circumstances. I don't have no clue what caused them to do that. Maybe it could, it could be something just as simple as he wanted to try something new. It could be something as simple as that. He's been going with the E Street Band for years and years and years, and he didn't want to get stale. So he decided to try something new, hire some fresh faces, hire some fresh voices, go in a little bit of a different direction. You know, maybe it might be that simple. I don't know. I don't know what the circumstances are. I mean, maybe it was money. Maybe the E Street Band started asking for too much or I mean and Bruce said no I'm just gonna dissolve this band and hire a different band that you know won't cost me as much money maybe maybe his songwriting took a little different direction that he wanted to go in and the E Street band just weren't weren't with it maybe that's possible I mean I doubt it <laughs> knowing the talent that's in the E Street band I very seriously doubt it but I mean it's possible maybe he was just looking for a different sound that the E Street Band just could not replicate. I, I don't know. I have no idea what the circumstances are. All I know is this. From what JFK told me, the E Street Band got dissolved, he hired this band, and the fan outrage and the fan outpour in support for the E Street Band to come back was so strong that Bruce really didn't have, I mean, Look, he's, like I said before, he's the headliner. He can do whatever the hell he wants, but he's a smart guy. He's a smart businessman. And he knows that if the fans aren't happy, they're not going to buy his records. They're not going to buy his t-shirts. They're not going to buy tickets to come see him play. And his career is going to start to decline. He might have even seen a decline and said, I need to change things. The fan outcry, the, 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 the loss in revenue, the declining record sales, the declining merch and ticket sales. I need to take a drastic step and get those numbers to come back up on the upswing. How do we do that? Very simple. Get the E Street Band back together. I don't, know, I don't know if that's exactly what happened. I don't know. I'm speculating here because I don't know. But I know from past history with other bands, including bands I've been in, this is what you do. Well, you you want to try something new? Okay, great. Try something new. I got no problem with bands trying something new. When you see it's not working, when you see it's working against you, you quickly switch gears and you go back to what was working for you. Don't try to make what's not working for you work for you because you're just gonna see that decline become steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper. It's gonna get ugly real quick. Uh, you know, there, and there have been bands that have done that. You know, they, they build up a fan base and then they say, okay, we're gonna go in a little different direction. And they go in a different direction for one album. And it's not well received. But the band, in their infallible ego, decide to say, well, let's try again. Same thing, we're gonna, we're gonna keep trying this new direction, we're just gonna put another album out, and we're gonna force the fan base to like it. Folks, you can't force the fan base to like anything. They're either gonna like it or they're not. You cannot force fans to like something that you put out. You just can't do it. And then after the second album fails, even worse, the band, in their infinite ego, says, well, third tries the charm. Are you kidding me? No! Third try is not the charm. <laughs> it's not. It, it, it just, look, it's not working. Go back to what was working for you. And they try again with the exact same new direction. And it fails even worse. At that point, you, you're on a nosedive, man. You're in an absolute nosedive. Good luck pulling out of it. Sometimes bands are able to, but it's, it's rare. Um... So Bruce saw the outcry, Bruce saw the out, you know, the, the outpouring of support, and he decided, you know what? I'm gonna do what's best for business. And I'm gonna get the E Street band back together again. That's my theory. I don't know if it's accurate. I don't know if it's true. I don't know if that's really happened. 
but that's what I have a feeling happened. So anyway, I, 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 you got to give props for having the courage to try something new, but you also got to give props for the intelligence and the foresight to realize and see that was a mistake. <laughs> let's go back to what was working. So anyway, let's, uh, let's, let's finish this out. We'll get to the review. When you reach down, you couldn't find nothing left inside. But I'm sure of all the things that you love. Well, it's just a kiss away, kiss away, a kiss away, a kiss away. It's just a kiss away, a kiss away. said this during the course of the reaction I, I don't have a problem with this I really don't I, I I understand you know people being loyal 
to the East Street Band. I, I get it. I understand that there are people that, you know, that they're 100% loyal to, you know, Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band, but I don't, I don't understand why that, those same people will turn around and hate this. I mean, I, I don't, I don't hear anything wrong. I, I, I didn't hear anything wrong. I didn't hear anything, you know, that warrants the hatred that they apparently get. I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand. Um, there's a lot I want to say. There's a lot I want to talk about. I've already talked about it at length during the course of the reaction, so I don't want to sit here for another 30 minutes droning on and on about it. But, I mean, I, I just I just don't understand it. I don't get it. But anyway, I'm going to do my best to condense everything down so I'm not going off on, you know, multiple rants during the course of the reaction, but I, I guys, I'm not going to make any promises other than I'm going to try. Um, it, the currents are going to take us where they're going to take us, so if I end up going on four or five rants here, uh, sorry, but it's going to happen, so hopefully it won't, but if it does, it does. Let me get my thoughts together, I'll see you in the review, and we'll talk about it. Well, there you go, folks. That was Bruce Springsteen, and apparently they're known as that other band. <laughs> Bruce Springsteen with a tune called Roll of the Dice. This was a request from JFK, and this was actually one of JFK's three prioritized requests for the month of November for being a gold tier member on the Patreon page. So, there you go, JFK. Hope you enjoyed the show, man. Before I get to the score, I just, I feel like I need to reiterate this. Um, because JFK warned me that there could be a lot of flack being thrown, not just at me, but at him, uh, in regards to the selection of the video that he gave. Now, here's the thing, folks. He didn't give me this video originally. He gave me a live performance of this song with the E Street Band from like 2011 or something like that. I, I don't remember the exact year, but... It, it was, he told me it was from the E Street Band. That video got marked private after he had already made the request. He made the request, I received it, I tried to download it, and it downloaded just fine. Now, of course, I deleted it because I need to free up this space. But when I went to re-download it, sometime between the time that JFK made the request and I went to download it for the reaction, it got marked as private. So I can't use it. So I had to contact JFK and say, listen, uh, I can't use that video. It's been marked private. What do you want to do? And he gave me this. And with this video, he gave me a warning and he told me the story, the, 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 the extreme Cliff Nose version, that this was a band that was not the E Street band, that they are known as that other band or the other band, uh, one of the two. And he said, there's a really good chance that you're going to get flack for this because and I, and he, he said, I, I might even get flack for it because it is utilizing the other band. And they have left, apparently, a, a lot of people who are big fans of Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band, these people don't like this other band. They, they really don't. Um, and we're going to talk about this, I, I, I promise you. But I just I want to let everybody know that this was not JFK's original plan. We had to go to plan B. And... He wanted to apologize in advance because he knows a lot of people are going to get triggered by this, by this, by this usage of this band. And uh, he apologizes, and he said that's the best he could do on short notice. And guys, I get it. I absolutely get it, and I'm with him on this. So don't, don't be throwing hate. If you want to throw hate at anybody, guys, throw it at the person who originally uploaded the original video who decided to make it private. Dear Lord. Anyway, um... So I'm just giving everybody a heads up. Don't don't give JFK any flack for this, guys. He, 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 we, we had to make a last minute call, and this is the best we could come up with. So, or he could come up with, and I'm I'm along for the ride, and I'm I'm supporting. So, anyway, um, like I said in my closing uh, of the reaction, there is a ton that I want to talk about. The problem is I already talked about it during the reaction. And I really don't want to keep you guys for here for another half hour, you know, going over things over and over again that I've already gone over during the course of the reaction. I'm going to do my best 
I really am, folks. I'm going to do my best to keep this short and sweet. I'm going to do my best to just hit some bullet points. But there are some factors here that I could absolutely see myself just going off on a tangent, going off on a rant, and we're here for another 30 minutes. I, I could absolutely see it happening. Not once, not twice, several times. I'm going to try not to. I'm going to try to use as much restraint as I possibly can. But folks, I'm human, and I make no promises that that's going to happen. I'm going to try my best, but no promises. I got a bad feeling about this. Having said that, let's start off with the score. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give that presentation a 7.4. Yep, 7.4. I feel good about that score. Let me tell you why. Why? Okay. First things first, a 7.4, what does that mean? Well, a 7.4 would translate to a really good skill rating. So overall, I think this was a really good presentation. It would get four to five stars in a B plus letter grade. So there you go. 7.4, really good skill rating, four to five stars, and a B plus, not a C, not a D, a B plus, B as in boy. Yeah, I, I feel good about that. Now. How did I come up with that score? Oh boy, so glad you asked. Okay, let's just get this out of the way, shall we? So we're all gonna go to school right here for a couple of minutes. I understand this is not the E Street Band. I get it, I absolutely get it. And I'm in kind of a unique position because I hold no loyalty to either side. I don't hold any loyalty to the E Street Band I don't hold any loyalty to this band. When it comes to Bruce Springsteen, the only loyalty I hold, and take this with, don't just take it with a grain of salt, take it with a cup of salt. The only loyalty I have when it comes to Bruce Springsteen is to Bruce Springsteen himself. I could honestly care less what band he plays with. I don't care if it's the Sessions band, I don't care if it's the E Street Band. I don't care if it's this band. As long as what we're hearing, what we're seeing, and what we're experiencing sounds good, then I could honestly care less what band plays with them. It does not matter to me whatsoever. They are all hired guns. There is not one person in any of these bands who is along for the, for the is not a, they are not a ride or die. They are not a member of Bruce Springsteen. They are a member of the Sessions Band, the E Street Band, that other band. That's, guys, no offense, that is fact, okay? So, I hold no loyalty to any of these bands. So, I'm in a really cool position. Or I can, when I, so I can honestly say beyond a shadow of a doubt and beyond reproach that I am completely indifferent, okay? Having said that, I do not understand. According to JFK, that other band or the other band, they get a lot of heat. They get a lot of heat. Folks, I don't get it. Beats the hell out of me. I do not understand why. Nothing I heard about that sounded bad nothing now a couple things to factor in here one i've never heard the studio recording so i don't know i don't know how how accurate the studio recording is to this live performance the studio recording for all i know could be four and a half minutes long and bruce during this live performance decided to open it up that is a very strong possibility knowing bruce springsteen's history with opening up songs to turn them into giant jam sessions. Is there anything wrong with that? No, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Let him do it. This show, he wants to do it, let him do it. As long as he surrounds himself with people that are able to do it. And folks, put your personal feelings aside and look at this objectively. Did this band pull it off? Was this band able to watch for the cues, listen for the cues, follow the cues, anticipate without reacting anticipate where we were going to go and not reacting until they knew for a fact that that was where they were going to go. Yes. Yes to all of the above. 
So I don't see the reason for the hatred other than blind devotion. And folks, I'm going to warn you right now, be very careful with who you give your blind devotion to because it can lead you down roads that you don't want to go down. I have been guilty myself of having blind devotion and it turned around and I'm sorry, I don't like cussing, but I'm gonna, I am gonna. I think in this case, in this scenario, it absolutely is called for. It turned right around and bit me right dead square, dead in the ass, and I paid for it hard. So be very careful with blind devotion. Um, I know there are people who love the E Street Band. Good for them. I'm happy for them. I'm glad they love that band. Remember who the star is. Bruce Springsteen. He is the star. It's Bruce Springsteen and the E Street Band. It's Bruce Springsteen and the Sessions Band. It's Bruce Springsteen and that other band, whatever the band is called. Everybody refers to them apparently as that other band or the other band. It doesn't matter who Bruce Springsteen plays with. He is still Bruce Springsteen. He is the star attraction. Okay, so be very careful when it comes to devoting yourself to supporting. It's like, like I said about the baby metal comparison. There's the East commie band and there's the West commie band. But at the end of the day, as I found out recently, who is the star attraction? The three girls, they are baby metal. Everybody else just falls along for the ride and they are accessories. They are hired help. They are hired guns. East Coast, Eastern Combi Band, Western Combi Band, doesn't matter. They are replaceable. They are interchangeable. And I understand now a little bit better why they do the robes and the masks. That way it doesn't matter who's behind there because they, I hate to say it and I don't agree with this, but in the eyes of a muse who owns the rights, <laughs> in the eyes of a muse, they don't matter. What matters, what's really important, are the three girls. Same thing here. What matters is Bruce. So, why people have the hatred for this band, I don't know, because they sounded good to me. Uh, the drumming, solid. Absolutely solid. I had no issue with the drumming whatsoever. There were a lot of fills that, that drummer put in there that were really tasteful. Uh, really well done. And every time there was that fill, you could feel there was that transition. So and it never felt out of place, it never felt stiff, it never felt wonky. Every single fill fit like a glove. Speaking of fitting like a glove, can we talk about the bass player, please? Uh, this song, what that bass player was doing with the popping and the slapping every now and then, very tastefully done. I like it! I really did. I had no issue with anything the bass player was playing. He was a rock solid bass player. Uh, adding that color with the thumping and the popping, it sounded nice. Very nice and very tastefully done. Uh, guitar playing, very well done. Filling out the sound. Opening up the piano player to kind of take the lead as the lead instrument at times, which was really nice. I mean, the lead guitar player has some lines in there, usually when they were a little more subdued, but he had, he had a couple of lines in there too. It was nice. Um, the backing vocals, okay. I believe for this song, the backing vocals were necessary. And I believe, and when I say necessary, I don't, mean, I don't mean just as far as existence. I mean as far as placement within the mix. They were way up in the mix, right up even there with Bruce. Now, normally, not a big fan of that. And with the E Street Band, for example, you don't hear that. Maybe this is why people are so venomous toward this other band is because of the backing vocals. I have a feeling that's probably the reason. The backing vocals were a powerhouse force in this song and in this performance, absolutely. But here's the thing, did they sound good? Yeah, they did. Uh, the, 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 the balance between the voicings, uh, the, the notation within the voicings, the harmonies, uh, the counter melodies, all sounded really nice, okay? I have no issue with anything that happened there up until the last three minutes. Now at the last three minutes, I do have to say, 
the backing vocalists took over and they did they did bury bruce let's be honest here okay bruce bruce was still in the mix but man there were a couple of backing vocalists especially the two female of uh, backing vocalists who were taking those lead lines boy burying bruce now here's the thing though that happened yes but i'm sure that happened with bruce's permission uh nothing happens in the world of bruce springsteen without bruce springsteen saying so so i am sure that was all cleared i'm sure bruce gave the approval and i'm sure bruce was fine with it at least i hope so then again <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe those two girls were handed their walking papers afterwards. I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know the circumstances. But I will say those last three minutes, the, the, the backing vocals, backing vocals really took over the song. Um, and, and like I said, I'm sure that was by design. I'm sure that was Bruce saying, go for it. I'm sure he gave the seal of approval, but it was still noticeable. Um, maybe this is one of the reasons why that that other band or this or the band or the other band maybe this is one of the reasons why they are not liked uh it's very possible do i get it to some extent yes but even still it i mean it didn't sound terrible i mean it, other than the fact that bruce got buried it didn't sound terrible like from a notational standpoint from a chordal progression standpoint from a from a harmonization standpoint i didn't have any issue with it um, the only, the only thing that did kind of bug me a little bit was the supporting vocalist. Um, uh, he's out of height, man. He was doing a lot of woos. <laughs> kind of reminds me of Ric Flair. He, he was, he was wooing a lot, wasn't he? Woo! Woo! Hey, don't you start that with me! You know, live with the woos, you know, and the woos, and the woos, and the woos. Maybe that's one of the reasons why. Don't wrap me up yet, buddy. Woo! 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 I, I, I'll be honest with you. I, I, could have, I could have dealt with, you know, I, I could have handled about half of that. Uh, and I think it would have sounded better, honestly. I, I, think, I, think his, I think his shtick was a little overdone. Now, what he did sounded good it was well executed yes it sounded fine great range great delivery um great dynamic control nice support it was just in my personal opinion it was overdone take about half of what he did cut it out and I, I think it would have sounded even better uh but he was absolutely wooing it up wasn't he yes he was uh the overall I, I think it was a fine presentation the live performance looked good too having the ladies come down from the back up to the front to have some stage interaction and crowd interaction and showmanship I think it all added up uh, it looked nice did they check off all five boxes Stage presence, yeah. Stage energy, yeah. Uh, stage interaction, yeah. Crowd interaction, yeah. Showmanship, yeah. Uh, production, well, I mean, the, there were those dice. That's, it looked planned. It looked like it was part of the show. So I guess that would be production. So yeah, they checked off all six boxes. Go figure that one out. Um. So yeah, I mean, it, overall the, the product looked good. I mean, the, the production looked good. Um, the performance looked good. The song sounded good. I got no issue with it. I really don't. I really hope people in the comments can explain to me why there is this, this supposed hatred toward this other band, that other band, the other band, whatever you want to call it. Why? It, it, and the only thing I can honestly come up with after hearing it and seeing it, only thing I can think of is blind devotion. And I've warned, I just warned you guys, be very careful about blind devotion and where you put it. Um, and be aware, it, it can turn around and bite you back later. No, but overall, I think this was really good. I don't have an issue with it other than the backing vocals a little bit and the Woo Man. I, I'm going to call him the Woo Man. There you go. Woo! Ric Flair. That's right. Man, he was wooing it. Man, I'm sorry, but he, he earned that title. <laughs> I'm gonna call him the Woo Man from now on. Woo! Anyway, uh, 
7.4 i feel good with that score and that's where we're gonna stay so let's wrap everything up here in a nice shiny bow shall we we got a 7.4 which is a really good skill rating four to five stars and a b plus letter grade take your pick i don't care whichever one of those floats your boat final word final score i have spoken well, that's going to do it for this edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. Hope you all enjoyed the show. Hopefully, I was able to entertain you. If I was able to put a smile on your face and brighten your day, they did my job, and I'm so glad I could do it. If you guys feel like joining the fan base, go ahead and click on that button down there. If you guys want to like the video, go ahead and like the video. If you guys want to ring the bell, go ahead and ring the bell. It honestly doesn't make any difference at all to me. But if you guys feel like doing these things, well then by all means, feel free to do so. Well, that's going to do it for the night, folks. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, this is David Heretic signing off, reminding you to stay fabulous and support each other. Later. Peace.